two. Well, let's stand together this morning. I want to say good morning to our Facebook family, those joining us and who will be joining us online. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will what? Rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. It's a good day to be in relationship with Jesus, to be in his family. We can't forget that. Though the nations rage and plot vain things, God is alive. He's on the move. The best is yet to come. Amen. Amen. I just want to invite you guys to come down to the altar if you're willing, if you're able. We're going to worship together. Jesus, we just say thank you, Lord. God, we welcome you, Lord. God, we rejoice, God. God, we rejoice because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Because you're moving, God. You're doing good things, God. Come on, guys. We talked about the word hallelujah a couple weeks ago to rejoice, to celebrate who our God is. Can you do that right now? Can you make a declaration, God, before a song comes on? Oh, you're worthy. Oh, you're worthy, Jesus.
God, you still have the name that's above every name, Jesus. That every knee must bow, God. Every tongue must confess, God. Mm-hmm. There's no one like our God. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that anything that comes against me must bow to your name. Lord, I thank you that anything that tries to rise up within me must bow before your name. No more fear, no more shame. There's power in his name. Can you just declare that over your life as your worship? Oh, there's no one like you, Jesus. So we declare it over the nations, Lord. Savior, you have brought me 
I know it's real, but more than just a song that we sing and we enjoy, but can you declare that to the Lord? Picture your mountain, picture your trial, picture your circumstances. Are you resting in him or are you shaken? Is he your confidence or is there anxiety? And if there's anxiety, there's no condemnation, but be anxious for nothing. And in all things, make your request known to the Lord and his peace will guard your heart and mind. So we're going to sing this with the perspective of what's going on in our life. Jesus, you're our confidence. Thank you, Lord. We declare it over our finances, Lord, over our lost loved ones, God, over our housing, God, over our transitions, God, over our nation. Come on. And I will rest in your promises, my confidence.
all your promises, God. Not one will fall short. Not one will fail, God. God, you're no respecter of persons, God. God, if you've done it before, you'll do it again. Give life.
So I'll pour out my praise, I'll pour out my praise, it's your breath in my lungs. So I'll pour out my praise to you only. Thank you, Lord. You are so great, Lord. What a great song to proclaim over our lives today and over our cities and our regions and over this nation. I was just praying this week, spending time with the Lord, and I had read in Ecclesiastes, there's a time to die, a time to live, and I just was pondering that, and I said, Lord, what time is it? And I really was thinking, I was really thinking like for myself personally, what time is it? But he said so clearly, it's time to take the land. It's time to occupy. It's time to occupy. Now that what, what that says to me is we've been in a season of crossing over. We've been saying we're crossing over. We're leaving the old. We're going into a new era. I believe for two years we've been crossing over. Think about how long it took the Israelites to travel, right? A long time, I don't remember, but I know it was a long time. So we've been in a season that we're crossing over. And 40 years, 40 years, oh God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. It hasn't been, well, it kind of has been that long. We're coming up. We're coming up in January 22nd will be 50 years of Roe v. Wade. And we're believing for our jubilee. We're believing that we are crossing over into a new era. And we're going to see Roe v. Wade erased and overturned. Thank you, Lord. And we know that tomorrow is uh, an announcement over uh, from our Supreme Court. We don't know what it is. We don't know if it'll have to do with that. We don't know what that is. And we'll be talking more about that. But I just believe it is our time to prophetically just worship and say, Great are you, Lord, over our nation and over what you're doing and over our lives and over our families. We're going to worship this Saturday in Athens. We know that it's not the root of abortion in America, but it is one of the roots. And we found out it's been going on for many, many, many years and connected a little bit to the Roe v. Wade from Dallas. But we're going to go there this Saturday and we're just going to worship over that town and we're going to call back the goodness and the greatness of the Lord over Athens, Texas. We're going to prophesy what God wants to do. We're going to prophesy life over Athens, Texas, and we're breaking a spirit of murder over that town. And we're just saying that they, Athens, will be a sanctuary city, not only for the unborn, but for the glory and the presence of God, that revival will reign. And we're going to be at the Well Worship Center. So we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to dig a new well, to dig a fresh well of revival over that city. And we're just going and we're saying, God, would you do it there? Would you do it here? He's no respecter of persons. He's no respecter of towns or counties or cities or nations. But I believe he wants to do it here. How about you? He wants to do it in our town. He wants to do it in our nation. He wants to do it. And I was reading this morning. Um, there was, uh, some of you know Becca Greenwood, and she, she definitely has a governmental anointing. And um, there was a service at the Gate Church, which we know them in D.C., and they were just um, worshiping and praying. And they heard a supernatural sound of a trumpet for five minutes over D.C. And they were just proclaiming and prophesying that the Lord is bringing victory and that we are crossing over. We are crossing over into this new era. Not that things will necessarily get better, but that we will take the land. We will occupy. We will occupy until he comes. So, Lord, I thank you, Father, that as we worship in this place, we declare, great are you, Lord, that we occupy the land and we stand on this land and we say, this land is our land. This land belongs to you, God. This land, we commit this land to you, Lord. We commit this nation to you, that we will be one nation under God. Lord, we declare your greatness over our nation. We declare your greatness over our families. We declare your greatness over life. We stand for life in this place. 
place today. We declare your greatness over families today. We declare your greatness in this place in the name of Jesus and we declare revival. Revival and awakening over our nation. Revival and awakening over our nation. Revival and awakening over this place. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, it's your breath. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you. Oh, it's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise. Let's declare all the earth and all the Hearts will cry, these songs will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout. Come on, your let your praise Lord. prophesy. Let your praise prophesy. I said that I didn't think things were going to get better. Things are getting better, but I just, I sense in my spirit that persecution is going to increase over believers, but we must be grounded in the presence of the Holy Spirit. We must be grounded in the word of God, that we will not be shaken, that we stand. Having done all, we stand. We will be victorious. We are victorious, but we are victorious by the blood of Jesus. We are victorious by the presence of God. We are victorious by the blood. We are victorious because he makes us victorious in him. So, Lord, we thank you, Father. We press in. We receive your presence. We welcome your presence. We host your presence. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in my life. You're welcome in this place. Come on, just lean in to him today. Let's just lean in. Our victory. 
are your people. We are calling. Calling on you to hear our prayer. To hear our prayer. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Oh, I see and I'm sure and I'm in the city and then I see. Ah, His presence is here today. His presence is here today. Hariyashiri and then I'm sure and then I'm in the city. Righteousness, righteousness, righteousness. We want nothing less, nothing less, nothing less. Your righteousness, righteousness, righteousness. We want nothing less, nothing less, nothing less. It's in your righteousness, righteousness, righteousness. We want nothing less, nothing less. Righteousness, righteousness, righteousness. We want nothing less, nothing less, nothing less than your righteousness, righteousness, righteousness. We want nothing less, nothing less, nothing less than your righteousness, righteousness, righteousness. We want nothing less, nothing less, nothing less. God, in our own lives, God, we say we want nothing less than your righteousness. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. God, we say that we don't want to settle in our own lives for anything less than your righteousness, God. We don't want to settle in our city, our state, in our nation for anything less than your righteousness, God. God, we're committed to you, Jesus. We press into you, Lord. We want nothing less, God. We want nothing less, nothing less, nothing less than your righteousness, righteousness, righteousness. We want nothing less, nothing less, nothing less than your righteousness, righteousness, righteousness.
us just I feel the cleansing water the cleansing rain of the Holy Spirit and of his word just to wash over us um, Stephen and I this week we were just saying how we just desperately need to just stay in him in his presence in his spirit it just seems like there's so many things going on in our life in the world and just what's going on you just you can get knocked off so quickly off of your center do you know what I mean like just things that can come against you little things big things it, it doesn't matter it just it's what it is it just is coming you know um, the scripture says in the last days the enemy will come to just wear out the saints that's right. and I know that that that's something that we have already experienced and so which is why the scripture says do not grow weary that's right because do not that's grow weary the enemy's biggest agendas is to wear us down yeah so the only way I know not to get worn out and worn down is to get into the presence of God because the presence it refreshes it strengthens it's supernatural it's not of my own it's not of my mind it's not anything I can do you know great that we're in America and we're independent but we are not independent of the Lord the Holy Spirit in us is what empowers us so I just thank you, Holy Spirit, right now as we're worshiping in this place, that you just come in and let your water, your in, rain, Spirit. just come in. We welcome you to come. Yeah, and just wash Please over us, us today. Cleanse us. Soften our hearts and our minds and our emotions. Let us release and forgive. Whoa. We just, we cast off offense. It's so easy to get offended. Things can just come at you. You know, they're just the fiery darts. But Lord, we just release it to you right now. We want our hearts to stay pliable and soft and mendable and open to your presence. Because that's when you come in and you heal and you refresh us, Lord. Lord, we're not going to stay hard. We'll just say we'll not let our hearts be hardened. We're not going to let, even in the last days, men will be lovers of pleasure. We'll be going off for things. We'll be distracted to the left and to the right. God, I just say in Jesus' name, we're going to stay in the center. Jesus, be the center of our life. Jesus, be the center of my hope. Jesus, be the center of this church. Jesus, be the center of my family. Jesus, be the center. Thank you, Jesus. 
Camilla, I've been kind of wearing you out with basketball lately. Yeah. <laughs> Asking her to watch these basketball games with me on the couch at night. And today, I just want to warn you, there's two game sevens. Yeah. I'm excited about that. I'm excited about watching that basketball game. I'm a big fan. Fortunately, you've worn me down. I, I'm kind of looking forward to it, too. Oh, good. Now I'm kind of into it. But where I'm going, <laughs> but where I'm going with this is that that doesn't compare to the joy and the pleasure of being yeah. in the presence of the Lord. Yeah. Being in, in twined with Him. Yes. Thank you, Holy being Spirit. Being in union with Him. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Knowing that Spirit. all is well, that there's nothing Thank between you, me Spirit. and Jesus. The Holy Spirit is my Thank comforter. You, he's Spirit. also my convictor. He's so gentle with me, and he's so gentle with us, that when we step Thank a little you, off, he brings Spirit. us right back where we're supposed to be. I heard the Holy Spirit say when Dennis was singing about righteousness. Righteousness is full power. Full power, or in our day, a full charge. I came up to the church, Beverly, and I saw your car. And then I saw Leon waiting to get your battery fixed because you couldn't start it. You know, we can only go so long until we need to be recharged. Amen. I just bought a little MiFi. It's a, it's a hotspot from my phone because that's how we're going to have to use the Internet in our new home. We don't have any service so we're going to use the hotspot and I put it on and I was delighted because all of a sudden I'm using my laptop and it's coming up and it's fast and I'm like wow this is amazing I came back about 20 minutes later and it stopped and I thought oh no what happened and I realized I got it out of the box it had a little charge but it didn't have a full charge and when it didn't have a full charge it didn't work as it was designed to work. It couldn't carry the signal that was what I needed to where I was. Are you with me? So what did I have to do? I just simply connected it to the power. And it recharged fairly quickly. And then it was working at full power. Moments like this, Camilla, God is recharging us. He is putting his power in us. The power of his righteousness the power of his righteousness, that when we go out, we will lay our hands on the sick and they will recover. We will say the demonic forces and the strongholds of territories like Athens, when we go out there on Saturday, we're gonna be fully charged and we're gonna speak and declare, we're gonna extend our hand and decree the freedom from the curse that has been placed over this region because of abortion. We're going to come in, in agreement with so many other prayers. Thank you, but I believe, Camilla, Thank the you, Lord, Lord is saying it's a moment. You talked about the word of the Lord, that it's time to take Thank the land. You, it's time to occupy. And I'm believing that it's the time for us to rise up in strength, in power, not yes. being weary, not pulling back, because we've had to. I've had to pull back a little to be recharged. You've got to wait on the Lord. You've got to sometimes be still in the presence of the Lord. But what's happening? He's filling us. He's recharging us. He's putting new power in us so that when we go out, we go out in His power. We go out in His strength. We go out in His authority. And what we say, He says. And what we do, He does. He will hear from heaven and He will heal our land. Amen. So right now, this is a, this is a powerful moment. Camilla, we're being recharged even as we stand yeah. Yeah. in the presence of the Lord. We might not see it. I don't see that little pack being charged except there's a little blinking light. It's just kind of going bop, 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 bop. Mm -hmm. and then it pops up and says, fully charged. I'm declaring now in the name of Jesus Thank you, that in this next Holy hour Spirit. that we're together or more, that the charging power of God is going to yes, be filling Lord. every yes, one of Lord. us. Yes, Lord. Every one yes, of us Lord. are going to be yes, charged Lord. to full capacity. Yes, and let me yes, speak Lord. about a lie yes, that I think the yes, enemy Lord. is saying right now. How Thank many of you know in technology Holy that batteries Spirit. get to the point that they can no longer be fully charged? They get old and, they're, they're, and then all of a sudden, like Camilla has an, an iPad, that it doesn't last very long. We'll charge it fully, but then it'll 
it'll die. Why? Because the capacity of the charge is not able to be as charged as fully as it was designed. I'm saying, Lord, renew us today. Yes. Renew <laughs> us today. Rewire us today. Rewire us. Do <laughs> something that, you know, it's a whole other way to see when God says, I'm going to enlarge your territory. He's going to give you more power to possess more territory. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, I just, I've, I feel, I just hear the Lord saying he's fixing the bugs <laughs> in us, you know, like you fix bugs in computers. Yeah. And I just, if you're close, I just, and if, even if you're not, I just want to encourage you to lay hands on someone around you because I just, the, the spirit is soaring right now and just that he's working out the bugs. We've been talking about the Lord healing trauma and um, just healing us in, from this past season. So Holy Spirit, if, if, wow, we just release the presence of the Lord. The Bible said, you will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You will release the Holy Spirit that's in you. Cleanse the leper, raise the dead. No, I'm getting that confused. Heal the sick. Heal the sick, raise, raise the, the dead. Leper, yeah. Raise the dead. That one. Freely you have received, freely you will give. Matthew 6. <laughs> so just release something today yeah. that you carry because as you release it, you're going to give back. And you're releasing what you carry. So. Again, just, let's just make sure, maybe if you're not around someone, you can just move over so that you can just lay hands on someone. Um, I see a few that does, is not, maybe, maybe you can walk around and just lay, yeah, there we go. Somebody in the back, um, get to Jor, Jornisha. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, like I'm looking out right now and I see Josh over here that's here by faith, believing for a miracle. Josh, the Lord is pouring more strength, more power, and he's moving out in infirmity. He's driving out the sickness, and every weapon formed against you will not prosper in Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We release a fresh Fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil. One thing I'm going to talk about this fresh morning oil. just a little bit is grief. I believe there's been an assignment against the body of Christ that has put a deep form of grief in our hearts. And I believe the Lord wants to touch that area right now. Yeah. Things that have hurt you and disturbed you and brought grief mm. to you. Losses that yeah. you've had. It's a disappointments bug. that you've had. Uh -huh. Delays. There's been so many delays. The Lord is moving, but the enemy is working hard to resist it. I believe the same thing that happened in Daniel's time is happening in our time. That the prayers are going up, but the powers of the air are resisting the answers as they are being released from heaven. But those answers are coming. It is inevitable. The answer has been released. Something is moving. Something is changing. God is beginning to shake everything that can be shaken. Amen. So I'm just speaking to the grief. You might want to put your hand on your heart right now and say to your soul, say to your heart today, I want you to be healed and recovered from all grief, from all loss. I want you to see what we sang this morning, that all of God's promises are yes and amen. Everything he's promised us, he will do. Everything he has said in his word will come to pass. And get ready because the best is now. And the best is yet to come. It's going to be, get better from glory to glory to glory. As Camilla said, there may be persecution assigned against the true church of Jesus Christ. But in that persecution, there's going to be explosion. Every time there's been persecution against the church, revival has come. Countries like China and North Korea who feel like they have somehow quenched any kind of movement of God in their nations. God is breaking those boxes and he's tearing down those walls in Jesus' name. But we're not going to have grief anymore because grief partners with doubt and unbelief. Grief believes the lie that nothing will ever change. Grief believes the lie that you'll never recover. Grief 
believes the lie that you'll never be happy again. We just come against those lies and we say you will recover. Yes. And you will find the oh, joy of the that Lord. Was and stolen. you will find the strength of the Lord. Ah. And your heart will be healed. Yes. No more broken hearts. Thank you, Lord. No Thank more you, Lord. grief. Thank in you, Jesus Lord. Name. Thank God, we say that weeping you, endures for the night. But we joy. come into the light. We come into the day. We come joy. into the morning. We're in a new season. We're in a new day. Joy. And we rejoice in that day. Joy. We rejoice in the day of the Lord. We Thank rejoice Lord. that this is joy. that day. We're going joy. to a new place. We're going to joy. a new place. We're standing in a new joy. grace. Rivers are flowing from a new source. God is moving by His Spirit, by His power. So everybody just declare, I am healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I am I'm healed. whole. My heart is healthy. Oh, my heart is healthy. My soul is blessed. My soul is blessed. Woo! Prospering in Jesus' name. Ah. Supernatural healing and wholeness is flowing ah. in Jesus' name. Come on, this has been our miracle moment. Oh, yeah, Today yeah, God yeah, just decided yeah, no, 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 to just yeah. plug us in and yeah. recharge us to full power. Yeah. And move out the bugs. He's doing an update. You know, another <laughs> word he gave me when you were saying bugs. This is kind of a funny thing that he said, but he said he's getting rid of the parasites. Yeah. There have been some things that have attached themselves mm -hmm. that God is detaching yeah. from us. Amen. And that goes he's to the that goes to the cellular level. The cellular level. Yeah. So we just speak to our cells. We thank you for Every the blood cell. of Jesus that Every cleanses cell. cells today. Camilla, we've over been our standing bodies. on the word that Don Crum preached. I don't know a year ago. Uh, from the scripture that says anything that the oh, Father yeah. did not it's plan two years now. will be uprooted. <laughs> Is that basically the right scripture? Yeah, now? Matthew. And Camille and I have been saying anything in me, anything yeah. in my life that the Father didn't plan, yes. the Lord himself is beginning yeah. to root it out. I'm top rooted. Mm -hmm. If I say root it out. Root it not out. Not just top it off, but pull it up by the root so that it has no, no further intrusion in our lives. Amen. Yeah, uprooting, yes. We're getting we ready to move that. into a season we where we're not Lord. just going to theoretically understand this scripture, but we are going to experience whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Yeah, thank you, And Lord. the world is going to see yet another division between those that are free and those that are not. Because in Christ, there's going to be a liberty and a freedom that no matter where we are, Shane, we can be in prison and be free. We can be going through the biggest trial and the biggest challenge in our life and be free. Amen. Where was Paul at the midnight hour? In jail, with chains, bound. What was he doing? He was worshiping God. Yeah, thank you. He was praising the Lord. You, Lord. Thank and you, all of a sudden, what happened? Thank you, Lord. The earth shook and yes. the chains fell off. That's yeah. where we are. Chains That's when the chains off. fail. Fall chains off. are breaking off. Ooh. And I'm coming back to you again, Josh. Listen, your chains are breaking off. You are too young, and God has a significant call and plan for your life and your future. You have a hope and you have a future. And your future is health wholeness and healing in Jesus name we speak to lupus to go in the name of you we speak yeah. to the kidneys to yeah. be restored in the, in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus to just be in purified the name of Jesus. completely in the name by of your Jesus. own kidneys in Jesus name in Jesus name one of the songs again that Dennis sang today um, you're going to have to help me Dennis with the words but the, but the gist of it is uh, I'm not asking for blessings. I don't deserve them. Some, I just you want more. Anything. Yeah, that's it. Jesus, listen to this. Jesus, you don't owe me anything. Come on, just say that. It's true. Say it. Jesus, Jesus you, don't, you owe don't owe me, me anything. anything. <laughs> and yet, here's the reality. He gave everything. Yeah. He gave us his life. Yes. He gave us authority. Thank you, Lord. He gave Thank us you, protection you, and blessing and he brought us to the father he didn't have to thank you and we can't have an attitude that he owes me when thank we sang lord. that i yeah. immediately felt conviction 
And I said to the Lord, I'm sorry. Right with the song, I'm sorry. I said, Lord, I'm sorry. I've served you with my whole heart. I'm not perfect. I, didn't, I was waiting for you to say amen to that. I'm way not perfect. But I have served the Lord in full-time ministry for over 40 years. And I love the Lord now more than ever, Camilla. We, we are in a season now. We are so excited and on fire for what God is doing. But I said, Lord, I'm sorry because every once in a while, I might take a hold of that attitude. God, I've done so much for you. I go to church. I have to. I'm the pastor. <laughs> no, I want to because I love the presence and I love you and I love what God does. Remember, we've said this many times. There are some things that God will only do when we're together. They're just far too precious for just one. And so, Lord, I just thank you. I'm sorry for thinking you owe me anything. But as soon as I repent from that attitude, then I hear the Holy Spirit say, but I want you to have it all. Yeah. No good thing Thank will you, I Lord. withhold from you, Thank you when Father. you walk uprightly yes. with me. Yes. I want to give you everything. I want you to be happy and healthy. I want you to have vision. I want you to have strength. I want you to live in divine health. I want you to, 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 to be a, an ambassador with full power. <laughs> Full power, full power. Francis Reinhardt, you were in the hospital a week before last, and we were praying for you, and you said, well, they just said I had a bad heart, and I'm just, you know, it's just what it is. But I just declare over you right now in the name of Jesus that the Lord gives you a supernatural, <laughs> great heart, strong that heart. you are an overcomer, full and power. that you are strong in the life. Yeah, you are at full power full in power. the name of Jesus. We just release healing to your body from the top of your head yes. to the bottom of your feet. Supernatural strength and healing in your heart right now in the name of Jesus. I still just feel the, the miracle power just floating around. So if you are in need of a miracle, just stand up because I just believe it's just a, oh, Lord, I receive. I just, I, I just sense um, it's just floating today. The miracle power is floating all around. Whatever it's just part, floating. It's like a wave. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I receive it. I receive it. I receive. I receive. We receive. We receive. We receive. Complete the floating presence of God. I am a shore, my alama, lela, masoro, yanaya. The presence, oh, Maya, there's nothing like your presence. Oh, yanaya. Healing, 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 healing. Healing is flowing, healing is flowing today. Healing is flowing today. Healing is flowing today. I'm caught up, I'm caught up in your presence. I just want to be in your feet. I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy. This is a holy moment.
Don when we came in this morning. What's happening on Saturday, this Saturday, March the 21st, is a significant holy moment. And one of the reasons why it is, you can be seated if you'd like to be. How many of you can wave your hand and say, I receive my healing? I receive a touch from the Lord. Amen. I receive a touch from the Lord. Amen. Just one touch changes everything. Just one touch changes everything. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for the touch of God on Camilla, the touch of God on Francis. I'm, I'm believing, Phoenicia, as you go and be gone for more than a month, that God is going to use you to be his hands, his heart. And he's going to anoint you to minister health and healing. Amen. We're praying for you, Phoenicia, believing for your safety as you drive and travel. Lord, we love you. See, what you're hearing right now is a grateful heart, a grateful heart, just crying out with thanksgiving. Thank you, God, for your promises. Thank you for your promises. Thank you that all your promises are true, even when it takes a little longer. We thank you for suddenlies. I'm declaring suddenlies over Camilla and over you today. A suddenly, that you just be ready. Just be ready. And, and, and try to have that full faith of expectation that we don't know when, we don't know where, but we do know how. We know who. I know who. It's Jesus. I know how. How? Not by might or power, but by his spirit. I know how. The blood, the word, the fire. Amen. I know how. I just don't know when. And I don't know where. But Lord, you can hit me in Walmart. You can hit me at Posados. These are kind of my hangout places. <laughs> you can hit me in my coming or in my going. You can hit me on my way in or on my way out. But I tell you what. I'm not going down anymore coming up. Are you ready to come up? The Lord's saying we're ready to ascend. We are ascending. Even Jesus descended before he ascended. But he didn't stay in the grave. Amen. And he didn't leave us in the grave. He pulled those that were captive in the grave and he led them. He brought them out. Just read Ephesians chapter 4 and you'll find out Jesus went and got them all. Can you imagine that day when Moses Joshua, David, Solomon, all waiting. Jesus walks in. It's time. It's time. It's time. Let's go. Can you imagine anyone saying, you know, this hadn't been all that bad, Jesus. We don't mind being down here in the grave. No, not one of them. Not one of them. They all said, let's go. Are you ready to say to Jesus today, I'm coming with you. I'm ascending with you. I'm not staying in this place anymore of depression and darkness and the, and the, the, the ups and the downs. It's like a wave, you know, the double-mindedness. One day I'm excited about it. The next day I don't think it's ever going to happen. Come on, I'm ascending. I'm ascending. Are you ascending? Who will ascend the mountain of the Lord? Let's go. Let's go with Jesus. Amen. Now, I said all that because this Saturday is a powerful day. And Camilla, I just want to declare, the Lord spoke it to you. You came back and said, I feel like the Lord wants us to do this. And I want you to hear, this is a big deal. Everybody say, a big deal. Because Camilla hasn't been able to do anything like this for more than a year and a half. I don't want to exaggerate, but probably closer to two years. Not being able to do anything, not even an overnight trip, not hardly any evening meetings because it's just too exhausting. But she would rally for a Friday night fire or, an, or a prayer meeting here and there. But many times she would pay a high price the next day, be so tired, hardly any energy. Well, that's over. And I'm already seeing, we're already seeing victory. We're already seeing the prayers are being answered. So many of you have been praying. There's people watching that have been interceding and praying for Camilla. 
So it's a big deal when the Lord says, it's time, Camilla, for you to rise up and lead the charge. It's time for you to put on that crown as a warrior queen. Her name means warrior queen. And the spirit of Deborah with Barak at your side, we're going to go and take the land together. Amen. It's a big deal. And I hope you can come. It's a big deal. But you know what? We're, we're also never going to be discouraged because if two or more gather, he will be here with us. But we have a church in Athens that's been announcing it to their, their small congregation. And they're coming out. They just feel so blessed that somebody wants to come and pray and, and stand with them for their city. We're going to sow into Athens and we're going to reap into all of East Texas. Because Bethesda is not just a one city congregation. Amen. We got people from Ben Wheeler and Mineola, Tyler, Van. Chandler, who else? White House, Terrell. Let me hear it for Terrell. Woohoo! Would you rather live somewhere else than Terrell? I don't know. So, you hold a key to bless your city. And this is a moment for us to bless Athens and then carry that blessing back. To our cities. I want Lindale, Texas to be blessed. I live in Lindale. Where do you stay? I stay in peace, but I live in Lindale. Wow. What a great morning, huh? Dennis and team, what a great blessing. Thank you all. Let's give the Lord a good hand. This, this, is, the, this is the A team. And I know you guys realize it, but uh, we are blessed at Bethesda to have such great anointed musicians and worship leaders. I have pastor friends calling me all the time asking me, you know, how do y'all do it? I don't really know, but I'm thankful to have these guys. And, uh, and yet, as every other church, it's, it's every once in a while we have a Sunday where our drummers, both of our drummers are out today. So they called on the conga, the conga guy. <laughs> Dennis, Dennis looked at me. He opened his eyes up after we were practicing. He said, okay, this won't be so bad. <laughs> but that's I know not, he was, direct quote. I know you were worried. He was a little worried, but I appreciate your prayers, Dennis. But it's just a blessing because we're not going to ever get discouraged by what we don't have. And this is a good word. Can you hear this? Don't be discouraged with what you don't have. Encourage yourself with what you do have. What little you might have. If it's just five pieces of fish, was it two pieces of fish and five? Was it five fish and two loaves? Well, whatever it is, it might not look like it's enough, but it will always be more than enough when Jesus steps in. Amen. So don't be discouraged by what you don't have. Vicki, it's great to have you. And I should have said it while Jim was there, but it's the second time Jim's played. Didn't, didn't you enjoy our guitar player today? Really a blessing. I think you guys are from Longview, aren't you? So you're going to bless your city too. Longview. We love Longview. All right. Camilla, do you want to make any announcements? Well, I'll tell you what. Let's, just, let's get our offering this morning, and then you make any announcements during the offering. Oh, look at Cecilia, so excited. Cecilia, I don't normally do this. Run up to the front. I just believe with your enthusiasm that you ought to bless this offering today. You probably have a testimony, do you? If God taken care of you? Yes, he is, very much so. Um, he's so good. In giving, you cannot out give God. That's right. The more you give, the more he gives back. So that's, that's just it. That's good. So, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your provision, for being Jehovah Jireh. We love you, Lord. And, yes, I'm excited to give to you. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
<laughs> That's good, Cecilia. Everybody say Cecilia from El Salvador. <laughs> oh boy, we've known Cecilia now for several years and she is a delight. Loves the Lord. Cecilia, the best is yet to come, girl. You watch. God has a way of really taking care of his sons and daughters, doesn't he? Camilla, any announcements? Okay, uh, if you have not been a part, you can join in on this conference call. We'll put that number up, and if you have your phone, just keep it there for a moment. Take a picture of that. You can call in and check in. They'll ask you, like, uh, you know, do you want to join the conference call? And all of a sudden, you're on there with Joy and Camilla and Melinda. I, I'm trying to, I know I'm going to miss people, but uh, others that have been on this call. I've never gotten on the call directly, but many times I'll sit in the room and just enjoy the conversations and join in the prayer. So uh, get on that call if you can. It's powerful. This is a form of technology that probably post-COVID, the church has really started to capitalize and, and utilize more is to get on Zoom's calls and conference calls. Larry, I'm going to just share your testimony briefly. Uh, Speaking of technology, Larry uh, was alarmed, one of his friends, out of state. Uh, you just had uh, an idea that he needed help, so Larry called him. Uh, Larry was in a situation where his internet was down, but it, there was a moment that it was open, so he took advantage, made that call, got through to find out his friend had, had just had a massive stroke, was in a hotel, room alone and not able to call for help so larry uh called 911 here who alerted 911 in north carolina they went to him found him revived him and went to the hospital and released him and said everything that happened happened just on time no major damage you'll completely recover amen Praise the Lord. You know, I believe there's going to be an even greater awareness. Ask God to give us an even, an, a more keen sense of hearing from him. I was on the lawnmower yesterday morning, and I felt like the Lord put something in my heart. And I stopped the lawnmower and just immediately prayed. And I'm, I'm thinking the Lord is saying, I'm going to do this more and more. More and more to the people that will hear and quickly respond. Uh, we have a wonderful prayer chain that all of you all have facilitated so beautifully. And we put out a, 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 sometimes a, a need or a request. And all of a sudden, there are many people lifting that up to the Father. And God is releasing solutions and answers to take care of whatever we're asking for. Amen. So just, just say, Lord, when Jesus taught the people... Many times he would start with this prayer, God give them ears to hear. Can we just make that our prayer as we began? Lord, give us ears to hear. Amen. So I'm excited about this message. And I think it's timely. I, I believe it's what the Lord wants for today. We'll find out. But so far the service has already been so glorious. If I was, gonna, if I was going to put a... Uh, a thought on what I've experienced so far this morning, it's the glory. And I don't know about you, but I am a glory hog. I love the glory. I want to be in the glory. I, like the song said, I want to stay right here. I don't want to move out from the glory. And I don't want to do anything that would cause that dove that is resting to, to fly off. We want to be sensitive and mindful to let the Holy Spirit move, do everything he wants to do. And he's already, being doing, he's already been doing that. Full power, restoration, cutting the, the, the cords of grief off of our lives, healing. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm going to, uh, my title is If My People. And you know this comes from a, wonderful passage of scripture that we're going to look at, 2 Chronicles 7, 14. But I want to start with the idea of if. 
Everybody say if. If is, and, and I have this, if is an uncertain possibility. If is an uncertain possibility. So the Lord is saying, what I'm getting ready to ask you to do is an uncertain possibility. Why is it uncertain? Because it really rests on us. We know God wants to do this. But God says, if you, if an uncertain possibility. I hope you're catching this. This was a revelation to me. That this also helps to strengthen my resolve that our lives are entwined in partnering with the Lord and his will. We're not the people that say, well, God's going to do it with or without me. We're the people that say God wants to use me to be a part of what he is bringing to the earth. And that we, each one of us, every single person, if, if you don't believe this, then I'm, I'm going to just ask God to give you a fresh revelation. But you are significant at every stage of your life, whatever age, a child, an adult, a senior, Whatever we are, wherever we are, male, female, black, white, brown, yellow, whatever, every one of us has a significant part in what God is doing. And the Lord says, if, it's an invitation, if you want to be a part of this, this uncertain possibility of global revival, this uncertain possibility of supernatural healing, for our land, where there's been such division, such prejudice, such hatred, that the Lord, not by our doings, but by his intervention, will bring healing to us. Amen. If it is a condition, a requirement, or a stipulation, Don, if you'll mow my yard, I'll give you $25. If... So if Don mows my yard, I'm obligated to give him what I said I would do. If my people, if we'll do what God says we should do, then he will follow through and do everything he promised to do. Do you believe that? Then you should shout amen. amen. You should understand that we're not on the defensive, we are on the offensive. That the church needs to rise up. The answers and the solutions are not going to come from the government. They're going to come from the kingdom of God. They're going to come from the ecclesia of God. And we're going to release the verdicts of life and health and restoration. We're going to do, this is a scripture that I've read many times, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit later. But the scripture Jesus said to his followers, to his disciples, whoever you forgive will be forgiven. Wow. Now, again, you've got to see the power of what Jesus said. We're going to read this story, but the people... The religious people got very upset with Jesus when he started pardoning and forgiving people from their sins. Only God can do that. And then Jesus comes and says to his followers, his disciples, and he's speaking it to us today, you can release people from the prison of sin. You can announce to them that they are forgiven. That's just so powerful. That's why we preach the good news. When you see people that are hateful, uh, tough, mean, you know that the gospel of Jesus Christ will penetrate their heart. It will move into the depths of their, their emotion to let them know that God loves them. And I don't have any doubt to say that. I don't have, and I want you to think about this statement and see if you agree. There is no one that is too far from God's love. Amen. That God loves everyone. Yes. And once again, that idea of God, you owe me because I've been a good guy, that doesn't exist in God's heart. He loves everyone. Right. And he doesn't want anyone to be separated from his love. So sin that separates, we break down that wall through the power of forgiveness. Amen? Amen? That's why it's so important for us as believers to not harbor unforgiveness in our hearts. 
Jesus was so strong about unforgiveness that he told us, your prayers will not even be heard if you have unforgiveness in your heart. Wow. Talk about full power. Maybe your power is being interrupted because there's unforgiveness. Somebody called you a name. Somebody criticized you or laughed at you or rejected you. Man, I had to break off a spirit of rejection in my life. I still see it resurfacing from time to time. I just have to break it down. And remember, God loves me unconditionally. And I'm happy to say my wife does too. She does. We're going to be married 33 years in just a few weeks. 33 years. That's pretty exciting. Now, you know, it's, you want to stay humble in that because as I get excited about being married 33, there's people in here who've been married 53 years. My father-in-law, I think their, their wedding anniversary is June the 8th. Ours is June the 10th. And they're celebrating their 60 year. I'm never going to catch him. Never, never, no matter how hard I try. <laughs> but we rejoice together, amen. All right, let me move into this now. Uh, everybody understand this idea of if? An uncertain possibility. I really like that revelation. But then it's also the condition, the requirement, the stipulation. God's not going to do this unless we step into our authority in our position of humility, and let's read what it says. If my people who are called by my name. I'm just going to make one comment. Keep that scripture up there for a little bit. I, don't, I want you to keep it up while I'm talking about it. If my people. So once again, this is a target audience. There are millions and billions of people on the earth today. But of those billions, this is a promise and a uh, statement directed to God's people. God's people. The solution to everyone's dilemma is in God's people. I want you to see how significant you are. You are here for such a time as this. Once again, Saturday, we're going to Athens. We're going as God's people. And when we pray, God is going to hear. And God is going to answer. And God is going to do it. Amen? If my people. And then it says, who are called by my name. You know, this is, a, uh, this is more understood in the culture and the customs of the Jewish people. But a person that carries the name. In one of the Old Testament uh, commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord in vain. Now, in the Western culture, most of the time, we see that and we realize it's not a good idea to cuss. Profanity is wrong. Somebody say amen. amen. That is true. But the real foundational truth of thou shalt not take the name of the Lord, the word take in the Hebrew actually means to carry. And the people of God, especially the Israelites, were the only nation on the earth that worshipped Yahweh, that worshipped God. They carried his name. They identified themselves as a people belonging to God. And because they belonged to God, they represented God. And I could go more into detail about that, but you do as well. You carry his name. You are uh, an ambassador of the Lord. Amen? Amen? And we can't forget that. When I get in the flesh and I want to say what I want to say, I want to zip my lip and remember who I am. Remember who you are. I'm an ambassador. I'm a, I'm a son of the Lord. I'm a son of God. Jesus is the son of God. We are sons and daughters. He's brought us into the family. Amen? So we're called by his name. So this is who... This is targeted for if you who are called by my name, my people. Okay, now let's move into some of these things in 714. Well, I'm going to read it first and then I'm going to go through each one for a moment. Will humble themselves. Will pray. 
will seek my face, will turn from their wicked ways. So there's four things right there that I'm going to identify. Humble ourselves. I want you to know that I believe this is probably one of the most missing characteristics in the people of God. Somehow along the way, in our learning of our identity and our position, we have partnered with pride. And the Lord is saying, okay, I want to address this now. I'm going to resist the proud, but I'm going to give grace to the humble. And what is it to be proud or what is it to be humble? Pride relies on my own ability. Humility depends on the presence of in the intervention and the working of the Holy Spirit. Pride takes credit for what happens. Humility gives all the glory to God. Pride wonders if people will recognize how great I am. Humility doesn't care. Now that's one I'm, I'm still learning, but I've really grown a lot in that area. I don't care anymore. I don't. I just want... God to do what he's going to do. I want him to get all the glory. And I want to be humble in the sight of the Lord. Now, humility is not a lack of confidence. Somehow, I want you to realize that God wants you to have full, complete confidence in who he is and who he has made you. Be confident. I know who I am. I'm a child of God. I walk under the anointing of the Lord. And it's like that song we've sung, Too Good Not to Believe. I've seen miracles. I've seen healing. I've seen blind eyes open. He's just too good. Humility, though, stays in that place of he is just too good. The enemy says, okay, they're walking in miracles, so let's distract them and let's pull away uh, the focus from the Lord in humility and bring them into a place of pride. Hey, you know what? I got the gift of healing. I'm going to have a ministry now. I'm going to tell everybody that I heal the sick. One little miracle and somebody wants to be in the ministry. Well, I want to say you should be in the ministry no matter what. Because you are in the ministry everywhere you go. Because you're a child of God. And if you're waiting for an event to cause you to minister, then you're partnering with pride. Humble yourself and serve the Lord, and he will exalt you in due season. Right? So I want to just throw out to there that the first condition of the if is to be humble. Now, humility can be bold. How many of you know Moses was very bold? Somebody just wave at me or answer that you heard my question. You know Moses was very bold. And yet, what did God say about Moses? He was the meekest man on the face of the earth. I want that spirit to be the greatest prophet and deliverer in all of the Old Testament. And yet the way God saw him was the meekest man. That means somewhere in his heart between everything he did and everything he saw and the mighty miracles of God, he stayed so tender and so humble and so dependent on God that he would say things like, I'm only going to go if you go with me. I love Moses. Moses was humble. But, but again, humility is not weakness. Humility is actually, in my opinion, the greatest, highest pinnacle of strength. And then it says, number two, if my people will pray. There has been an absolute new emphasis in the kingdom. If you're listening, you are seeing everywhere an emphasis and an invitation to pray and pray and pray. Houses of prayer and, and, and ongoing prayer. And not just prayer. I, I, many times when we say prayer, we think of just the... the uh, but prayer really is joined with worship. Prayer and worship work together. Uh, we just got an email from Jason Hershey. And Jason, I don't know if you'll see this, but I'm praying. And Bethesda prays and stands with David's tent. They've been asked to move again. There's things happening in D.C., so they're getting ready to have to move back to the corner. It's really not a bad place, but they're, they're right, right now they're right on the mall between the Capitol and the Washington Monument. It's an amazing location. But they're going to have to move for a few weeks. 
But after that, they have no place to go yet. They've seen God over and over and over make a way when there was no way. So we're just declaring an open door and a way for David's tent to get an upgrade. I want to declare an upgrade, a better location, a better location. But, De- but Jason said, we are in our seventh year. We're not going to quit in the seventh year. Amen? And I tell you what, Camilla, the next thing we're going to do in our victory is go back to D.C. Are you ready? You want to go? I'll book it. <laughs> we will pray. And, and another thing about this, we will pray. I want to just eliminate. I want to obliterate the obligation and the duty of prayer. And I want to transfer it to the desire and the passion for prayer. That we don't say, oh, please come pray on Wednesday nights with us. I don't want to pray. I don't want to go there. I don't feel anything. Come on. Let's pray. Let's want to pray. Let's show up to pray. We're, we, we've got prayer meetings all the time. Talk to Francis. They, they're meeting faithfully on Tuesdays. Camilla meets on Thursdays. We meet Wednesday night. And you know what I would love to say? I'd love to say, man, there's prayer meetings popping up everywhere. In the homes, in in businesses. It'd be great if somebody in the church says, I got a business. We're going to have a prayer meeting at 7 o'clock in the morning. Anybody can come that wants to. We're going to pray. It's a part of the condition. The people that God's going to use and hear are the people that pray. Then he says, we'll seek God's face. Now, I think it's interesting that it's qualified the seeking his face. Because petition is very broad. And there's nothing wrong with asking God to help you with your needs and the things that you're dealing with. It's very good. There are some religious people that feel like you shouldn't bother God with your personal problems. Well, I'm here to tell you, God wants to know everything. He wants to communicate with you. He wants you... You guys act like you've never seen a baby before. Come on. (laughs) Lord, everybody's looking over there. But she is beautiful. I'm going to preach that direction for just a minute. Olive, you have a call of God on your life, little girl. You are precious, and we are going to see you raised up to be a powerful, 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 powerful little queen in the kingdom of God. Oh, this is a precious little girl. She's got my heart for sure. Wow. Oh, I almost almost forgot what I was going to say. Oh, seeking his face. (laughs) Seeking his face. Come on. I think you guys can follow this. Seeking his face is looking full. We sing it in hymns. Look full in his wonderful face. Not limiting yourself. Now, follow me on this. There's different parts of Jesus that we could target in prayer. His feet. The, the love and the adoration that we come before Jesus to worship at his feet. Or his hands, the confidence that we have that he will not withhold anything, that he loves us. He will supply all of our needs. Amen? But in this particular invitation, if my people will pray, it's asking us to look into his face. What do you see when you look at someone's face? You see their eyes. You see their expressions. You hear their voice. You see and you identify. You know, if you close your eyes right now, you would hear me talking. But it might not be the full context of the expressions that I'm trying to make. Jesus is the same and much more. He's expressive. And when we pray and we seek his face, we're going to know his heart. And that's really the point. When we seek his face, we're going to know his heart. When we seek his hands or we come to his feet, it's more our expression of worship. It's more our opportunity to love on him. But when we come to his face, we're we're in that place of, I'm listening. I'm waiting. I'm hearing. I'm adoring you for who you are. And then the last one, and this is not the least by any means, But I also want to say that too many times in this passage of Scripture, this is the only one that's emphasized. You need to repent. Well, can I say something very boldly? If you are an on-fire believer 
and you are the people of God who carry his name, then repentance is important, but it's not the most focused area of your life because you are living for God. You are walking by the Spirit. And you're saying at some point in your life, and I want you to hear me. I remember the first time I heard Bill Johnson say this, it, I had to kind of listen. In fact, my, my spirit was a little, my mind was a little offended. Bill Johnson made this statement one time, I'm not praying about my, my, my heart and not repent. I don't go before God and repent every day. Oh God, just forgive me for being so mean and ugly and lousy. What he was trying to emphasize is that when you come into a place as a son and a daughter that you're walking with God, you should be living a life free from sin. But when sin interrupts, and it does, it does me, then we deal with it quickly. We repent of it immediately. I'm not partnering with that. That thought, I'm not going to take that thought. What I want to say, I'm going to hold my tongue. The Bible says in James, that's really the most visible form of maturity is to be able to, to not say what you want to sometimes. But he says here, if we will turn from our wicked ways. So again, our hearts are so fastened on loving and pleasing God that we're not going to allow anything to turn us to the left or the right. Amen. So good. Amen. Now, look at the second part of this. This is the condition. Now, here comes the resolution and the promise. Then I will hear from heaven. Then I will forgive their sin. And then I will heal their land. And it's all joined to what God's people will do. If we're humble, if we pray, if we seek his face, and if we turn from wickedness. Okay, let me just talk about some areas of wickedness that I am turning from. I'm turning the TV off. I'm turning the channel on the radio when it starts becoming foul. Now, I'm listening to Christian music most of the time. So, but there's, there's a lot of Christians that listen to stuff that is unacceptable. You have the power to turn it off. Turn from your wicked ways. There's something about sin. Let me just throw this out. The nature of sin first is that it's pleasing. It pleases the flesh. But I am crucified with Christ. And my flesh is crucified. So if I want to walk in full power, be in a position to stand in the gap, to pray, God will hear from heaven when his humble, committed, faithful, and righteous sons and daughters pray and seek his face. So don't let the enemy dilute your power through compromise. I'm talking to Christians now. Through compromise. Here's some areas of compromise. Integrity. We just paid our taxes a few weeks ago. Integrity. I'm not reporting that. Integrity. I'm not getting a lot of amens on that, Camilla. Um, I'm not going to belabor that point. But this is one thing you have to understand about who the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit is our convictor of sin. Paul said very clearly in Romans, there is therefore now no more condemnation. Because that's what the law did. It condemned us because we are all guilty. But the Holy Spirit has come to set us free and then through conviction to keep us free. I'm free. I'm staying free. That's why the scripture says, do not be entangled again with the yoke because that's what the devil will do to free people. He'll try to trip you up and tangle you up and cause you through compromise and embracing wicked ways to dilute you so that you're walking in darkness once again. The Bible tells us in 1 John that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. And if we walk where? In the light as he is in the light. Then we have fellowship. 
That's what church is supposed to be, and that's why church is so dysfunctional today is there's a lot of people walking in the darkness that have no real fellowship. And the church is a place of conflict instead of unity. And instead of the conviction of the Holy Spirit on hearts that are yielded and asking the Lord to show us along the way everything that we want to do to please Him and live for Him, right? Instead of conviction, we're walking in areas of compromise that we're just trying to not be identified. We want to hide. I love big churches, and I believe this will be a, a much larger church at some point. I hope it's while I'm here. <laughs> but I think there's a destiny for this place to be a real center of revival, the apostolic cultures, and seeing the move of God through Bethesda. Come on, let the, let the little flock say amen. amen. But I'm not jealous of the problems of big churches. I've got pastors and friends that pastor large church, large churches, and they talk to me about the things that they have to deal with, and I say, I'm free. Thank you, Jesus. I have a board that loves me. I have a congregation that loves me. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Dennis. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm kind of having some fun with you today, but it's true. Church is supposed to be a place where family gets together that we're walking in the light, we're not hiding behind masks, that we're humble, that when we struggle, we ask for prayer, that we're willing to confess our faults to one another because we're not in a place where we'll be judged. We're in a place where we will be loved. Amen? And when, just like in the first church, people say to me, well, I like the first church. Well, let's go back to the first church. Let's share everything. Let's give to everyone. Let's just not worry about our own bank accounts. Let's just give it all to the feet of the apostles and let it be distributed. You want that? It'd be great, wouldn't it? I don't mind telling you right now, most pastors, including this one, we really have a dilemma on a daily, weekly basis on emphasizing giving. I only want to emphasize it by the Spirit. So by the Spirit, I want to tell you that Camilla and I and our team, that work here at Bethesda. I'm not sure many of you would keep working at your jobs when you don't get paid. But God takes care of us. It's not about just the offerings and the tithes of the church. But we're in another season where we're not being paid. And it's a little frustrating. But we're saying, God, you will take care of us. You will supply our needs. You will bring in and grow this church to become what you want it to be. Amen? So can I be honest enough to tell you it stinks sometimes when I can't pay Justin, when we can't take care of the things that we've committed to. Let me tell you something that we have never been, we've never missed. We've never missed supporting our missionaries. But I want to say this humbly. It cost me, me, when we pay our missionaries, then our staff doesn't get paid. That stinks. But Lord, you're good. So these are the frustrations that you got to say, come on, let's be the people of God that work together, that are humble, that are open and honest. Don, I'm not going to, I'm not saying anything you've told me. So this, anything I'm saying right now towards you is something in my heart. But I just have such an amazing respect for Don. I see him as an apostle, and I see the nations opening before him, but I also know it's been a weird season, and Don's been trusting God, you know, and believing God. And Don and Sherry, I just pray the provision of the Lord, the supply, the, 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 the more than enough over your lives. Because it stinks when a man of God and a woman of God are just struggling. David somehow said and set a standard for what I, what I believe. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging for bread. I'm holding to that promise. When I don't get paid, I'm holding to that promise, God. You're never going to forsake us. You're never, we're never going to be begging for bread. When Dennis and Bonnie didn't know they were going to have a place to live in, they were a few weeks away from saying, we have nowhere to go. God made a way. 
we rejoice. Amen. And over and over we have testimonies of God's goodness and God's faithfulness. But I'm wanting to go back full circle. Right here we're talking that so much of what God says he will do depends on what we will do. What I'm talking about specifically about Justin and Camilla and I, our income, has a lot to do with what you do or do not do. But that doesn't depend only on that. Again, back to the song, God's too good to not believe. How many times have we been at that moment? Justin, how many times have we been at that moment? I, I love and appreciate Justin, his heart. He's like, Pastor, it's okay? And I said one time to Justin, honestly, I said, I really love and appreciate your humility. But you have a wife that works, so you have some income. My wife works here, and we both get paid here. So when we don't get paid, we get nothing. I'm not trying to belabor this. I probably said more than I should. But what I want to tell you is this is a dilemma in the whole church. And it's not going to be something that causes me to quit. I promise. But I want you to know that I would say this might be the number one reason why so many pastors leave the ministry is they're not, they're treated like hirelings and they're not taken care of. And God says, that's a poor representation. So I'm saying, God, I trust you. I look to you and I'm not going to buy into that in Jesus' name. Can I give you some good news since I'm talking about all that? Uh, a year ago, Camille and I launched out in great faith to believe for some property, to move out of a home in a neighborhood where we've been for 12 years, 13 years. We found some land. We went to our banker, and they said, okay, uh, we'll, we'll let you purchase the land. And then we started renovating this whole process. Well, Friday, that means, what, two days ago? We closed. It's ours. The house is completely finished on the inside. And then we'll come back and take care of the outside. And I am looking forward to the day when we're going to have an open house. Just have all of you come out. Because we got wide open spaces. We want everybody to come. So in the midst of me saying, we're not getting paid, I'm going to throw out over here how good God is. How amazing God is to give us this property and to allow us to close on it. Thank you, Jesus. I also want to say in a funny way, we were getting paid consistently while the bank was looking at us. Are you with me? Because they were looking at everything. I had to report anything and everything. Well, um, one time Camilla sang at a karaoke club. No, I didn't say that. I mean, but they were looking for everything, like trying to qualify us for this loan. I don't know if anybody here is a banker. So we were like, well, we did this, we did that, we have this, we have this. And they, I mean, we were qualifying by the, what, the hair of our chinny chin chin, right? So all this time I was thinking, God, when they're constantly saying, we need you to send us the last uh, four uh, pay stubs, I was able to send them the last four pay stubs. And once they locked us in and qualified us, then it wasn't an issue anymore. So thank God. He's good, right? All right, I've gotten way off my subject. But let me move to this idea of God will hear from heaven. So the one thing I want to just throw out as a real positive good news is that when God's people pray, God hears. Don't let the enemy lie. And don't let the non-response that you sometimes have discourage you. I want you to confess when you pray, God has heard my prayer. And I want you to have confidence in the Lord that God has heard my prayer. I want you to rest that God is looking out for you and that his eye is upon you and that he cares for you. Amen. You are not forgotten. No matter what you're going through, no matter where your finances are, no matter the state of your family or your future, God will hear from heaven. That's good news. 
But then it goes on to say this, especially that the people of God are standing in the gap, not only praying for ourselves, but now we're praying for our nation. We're praying for our city. We're praying for our family. We're praying for our communities, right? And God says, when you pray, I will hear. And when you pray, I will heal your land, your family, your city, what you're asking for. You're standing in the gap. God is hearing and God will answer and God will honor your prayer. God will honor that you're seeking his face. So I want to look at Psalm 103, verse 3. There's two things I want to throw out in this. Uh, It says, David starts out in verse 1, bless the Lord, forget not all of his benefits. In verse 3, these particular things, who forgives all your iniquities. I just want to stop right there for a moment. This word iniquity is the Hebrew word avon, avon. And it means sin, perversity, depravity. So that's kind of common, the iniquity. Sin, perversity, depravity. God can forgive all of that. Amen? God can forgive abortion. God can forgive murder. God can forgive adultery. God can forgive homosexuality because he loves us, right? But here's another thing that it means. It means that he can forgive the guilt. He can pardon and remove the guilt. He can remove the punishment of sin. We understand that that's what Jesus was. The theological word is propitiation. That Jesus was the propitiation. That means he himself became the punishment. He took the punishment for my sin, for our sins. That's the gospel message. I hope you realize. That's what Jesus did on the cross. He took the sin. David is prophesying in Psalm 103 of God who forgives all. Everybody say all. All your iniquities. I want to read a passage of scripture from Mark. I want to make one comment on this. I know, I know where we are on time. I'll be finished in just a moment. Several days later, Jesus returned to Capernaum. And the news quickly spread that he was back in town. The boy is back in town. Now, if you're a Cowboys fan, you caught that, but that went over most of your heads. The boys are back in town. Number two, soon there were so many people crowded inside the house to hear him that there was no more room. that's, That's what church needs to be. When, when we get to the place where people are no longer distracted by the personalities of the, of the church and people say, I'm going because Jesus is there. I'm going because Jesus is in the house. Right? Hallelujah. So, uh, there was no more room even outside the door. While Jesus was preaching the word of God, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man. But when they realized they couldn't even get near him because of the crowd, they went up on top of the house and tore away the roof above Jesus' head. And when they had broken through, they lowered the paralyzed man on a stretcher right down in front of him. Exclamation point. How about that for an interruption? Jesus is preaching. How dare you? Just comes right down like Spider-Man. When Jesus saw the extent of their faith. Now, again, I could have just preached this whole passage. But what's Jesus looking for, everybody? He's looking for faith. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith? When he comes here, will he find people that are full of faith? This guy was being lowered by his friends with full confidence that Jesus was going to help him. And Jesus recognized that faith. When Jesus saw the extent of their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, now listen to this, this is kind of unusual. My son, your sins are now forgiven. This offended some of the religious scholars who were present 
And they reasoned among themselves, who does he think he is to speak this way? This is blasphemy for sure. Only God himself can forgive sins. Jesus supernaturally perceived. This is where God wants his people to become. He wants us to become people that perceive by the Spirit. That we supernaturally perceive. Not by, just by what we see, but what we perceive. What we discern. Amen? So he perceived their thoughts. And said to them, why are you being so skeptical? Which is easier? It's a great question. Which is easier? To say to this paralyzed man, your sins are now forgiven. Or stand up and walk. Now stop right now. Everybody look at me. Isn't the obvious answer that the easier thing to do is to say something that cannot really be verified? You're forgiven. Okay, thank you. You're healed. Wow! So what's easier? It's to say you're forgiven, right? That's just talk. So some people would like to think. It's just talk. That's just religion. No. Jesus said this. But to convince you, verse 10, that the Son of Man has been given authority to forgive sins, I say to this man, stand up, pick up your stretcher, and walk home. Now, here's where I'm wanting to go. When I start in boldness saying these kinds of things, because I want to say them more, my faith and confidence in God, to say more and more, to step out with boldness and speak to infirmity and sickness and to come in the spirit of destroying every work of the devil. Right? Here's what happened with Jesus. Immediately. Everybody say immediately. 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 I like that. The man was healed and sprang to his feet in front of everyone and left for home. <laughs> he didn't even stay for the rest of the sermon. Well, hold on there, brother. Sit down now. I'm preaching. He was so excited. He got up and he ran out. Wow. The crowd witnessed this miracle, and they were awestruck. They shouted praises to God and said, We've never seen anything like this before. Lord, let this happen here and now. Let it happen in the places where my people will humble themselves and pray and seek your face. Turn from their wicked ways. Let it happen where immediately people are being healed and being set free. That all their sins are being forgiven. And healing is flowing. Let it be so in Jesus' name. We've never seen anything like this before. How about that as a, as a key thing that we would say over and over again? Never seen anything like this before. Well, I've never seen anything like You know, a lot has to happen if you're going to keep saying that. Well, I've never seen this before. I'll say about my father-in-law, I've been with him a long time now. And it never ceases to amaze me when we go to eat together how much he enjoys his meal. He eats that meal and he says things like, I have never tasted anything like this before. Well, he has. Here's the secret I'm trying to give you. He really has. But in that moment, his gratitude and appreciation comes forth. And in that moment, what he's eating is the best meal he's ever had. That's the culture that God wants us to have. That in the moment that we are in, the time and the season where we are, this is the moment that we are going to shine. This is the moment that we're going to say, I've never seen anything like it before. Because here's what religion does. Ah, uh, I saw that in the 80s. Oh, we were doing that back in the 90s. Yawning. Ah, oh, I'm bored with this. Come on. Let's get back to that wonder. Let's get back to the wonder and the faith and the expectation that whenever we come together, we're going to say, I've never seen anything like this before. Amen. That was the best meal I've ever heard. One time Jeff said to me, Jeff, and I appreciated it. Jeff said, Pastor Stephen, that's the best message you've ever preached. 
Now, I'm, I'll be honest. I thought about it later. I wonder if he means that all the rest of my message were terrible. <laughs> no, that's not what he meant. What he meant was that day, that message ministered to him, and it was the best message he ever heard. I've never seen anything like it. It's awesome. That prayer meeting. Now, when I say that's the best prayer meeting I've ever been in, does that mean that all the other prayer meetings that I've been in, and I've been in a lot of prayer meetings, were not that good? No. It means that I'm humble, and I have an appreciation and a gratitude for where I am right now, and God's maximizing every moment that we come together to say, Woo, this is the best I've ever had. I hope you can follow the, my heart in this. This heart of gratitude will spark revival. This heart of humility will bring such a culture of honor that we're no longer performing for one another. We are appreciating one another. We're loving one another. I couldn't do it without you. I wouldn't want to do it without you. And I'm saying this to somebody that's watching too. You're not alone. We love you and we wish you were here. But where you are, God is with you and he loves you. And he has a special, special grace that he wants to pour into your life. Amen? So I want to just finish with this last thought from that Psalm 103. Um, it says that he heals all your diseases. He heals all your diseases. Now, this is a fun Hebrew word. It, the way you pronounce it is takalu. Takalu. Everybody say takalu. Sounds like taco. Tak, takalu. Takalu. Don't pronounce the M. Takalu. It means disease. Well, that's what it says. He heals all your diseases. It means sickness. So, similar. You can be sick without a disease, right? So, he's got it covered. You can be healed from sickness. You can be healed from disease. Amen? But here's another thing it's talking about, and we address this today. The Holy Spirit brought it to us. He heals us from grief or anything that is grievous. I don't know if I gave you this, but the word grievous, I looked it up. Yes, great sorrow, full of grief, characterized by great pain or severe suffering. This is not God's will for you to be full of grief. He heals all your diseases, all of your grief. The things that have happened in our lives, there's not one of us that hasn't walked through challenges or death. In the church today, there are so many families that are fractured with divorce or other things that step into our lives. But what we cannot do is embrace and nurture grief. We've got to get it out of our heart. We need to come to the Lord and say, would you heal me? Hear from heaven and heal my heart. Heal our land. Take away the grief. Listen, there are some, there are some conversations that we have in our, in our culture now about uh, prejudice and injustice and Right now, it's, it's just a really hard time to maneuver, but we better have the mind of Christ, and we should have the full love of Jesus in our hearts for one another. All I know to do, because I can't argue about it, all I know to do is to live the love of Jesus, to live love for one another. I had somebody come up to me because... We are meeting in Chick-fil-A on Wednesday nights. It's, it's, it started out just a few of us, but like the other night, we had like 12. <laughs> and we're coming in and eating just before prayer meeting. And, and now all the, the Chick-fil-A staff's getting to know us and talk to us. And, and one of the girls came over to me and said, I really, really love your church group. And this, this particular young lady, we really, Camille and I like her a lot. Uh, she's African-American. She's black. I really love your church group because I see the love you have for one another. And they will know we are Christians 
by our love, right? So I don't know how much I can do, talk, and change, but I do know this, I do know this one thing. I can live the love of Jesus. I can display the love of Jesus, and I can walk in the love of Jesus. Amen? I want to read something to you. This is the last thing, and, and I want to do this and close out with us praying together. Uh, this is very, very significant. So what I just talked about is hopefully a foundation for what I'm about to read. The Supreme Court just announced that they will be issuing decisions on some cases on this Monday, May the 16th. While it is unclear which decisions they will announce, there is a chance we will find out whether or not Roe v. Wade remains the law of the land or not. They've been kind of pushed through protest and a, an illegal leaking. Uh, never happened before in the history of the Supreme Court. It is a demonic agenda to try to stop what God wants to do. But these justices, their eyes are wide open, and they can see. I believe, I want to say, I believe the devil has once again overplayed his hand. Those that are arguing for their choices are destructive and hateful and intolerant. The very things they accuse the people that want life, they're demonstrating by threatening the lives of our justices, intimidating and bullying, telling us, let us, we want to do what we want to do. Whether it is announced on Monday or in the coming weeks, we want to encourage you to consider these two important actions for your house of worship. So this was an email that Camille and I received. The first thing is continue to pray. How many of you know how important it is that we will pray? Don't just say, yeah, I'm going to pray and then never pray. That really bothers me. Don, that might be one of my real pet peeves. Christian people will all be praying for you. Yeah? Really? Let's pray. Continue to pray. First bullet point. Pray for our Supreme Court justices for their safety and wisdom as they finalize and announce their decision. Number two. Pray for our nation. For unity and mutual respect among our leaders, families, friends, neighbors as we discuss this issue. That would be a miracle. How about mutual respect? Nonviolence. Number three, pray for our houses of worship that they would serve as beacons of hope for mothers, fathers, and babies in need, and also for the safety of all those attending services across our country. There will, there will come a time that the enemy's agenda will be violent against the church. That's where we're going because the church is really what God is going to use to bring these things about. Okay, so the first is praying. The second is, and this is asking me to do this, which I'm about to do, communicate the case for life. So I want to just tell you, we want to clarify what the reversal of Roe v. Wade would mean, okay? If the Supreme Court, which is now the law of the land, says, no, we are, that is not constitutional, we are going to strike that law down. That is not the end of abortion. But it is the beginning of states rising up to determine what they will do. I want to give God glory that I believe and I stand that the state of Texas will stand for life. Amen? Amen. Now, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more as we read. Um, so, if the Supreme Court overturns Roe v. Wade, the important decision of when a life should be protected would return back into the hands of each state, the state's elected representatives, and ultimately the people. The people. Okay? I'm going to talk about some statistics in just a moment. So we want to clarify that's what it means. The Supreme Court will strike the law. It will be returned to the states, governors and legislators of each state. Call your community to action. I want to say thank you to Camilla because she was doing this before we read this. We're going to act. We're going to show up on Saturday, March 21st. And those of you that are watching, come from wherever you are and join us. May. 
Yeah, don't go in March, <laughs> May the 21st in Athens. And listen, if you're watching online, uh, send us an email or, or get in touch with us if you need to know the address. We can get that to you. It'll be in our newsletter. We'll get it posted so that it's available. Psalm 139 says, you, are formed, you formed my inward parts. You wove me in my mother's womb. I will give thanks to you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. So as we read Psalm 139, it is clear that two lives are involved. Both the mother and the baby. 73% of Americans, that's, that's a pretty good majority. 73% of Americans agree that when it comes to this issue, both lives, both lives must be considered and valued. It will be crucial for all of us to advocate on behalf of the unborn in our states while also, and I really believe this is going to be a big part where the church is going to rise, also providing care love and resources to moms and their babies. I don't really know what that looks like. I've already kind of complained a little bit about our lack of resources. So now I just want to say, God, we're calling the resources as a community of faith that we will have everything we need to help mothers and their babies. That when this law is overturned, there's going to be a void that we are going to rush in and fill Come here and we will help you. Come here and we will stand with you because we believe in life. Amen. Last couple of things. Only 17% of America support late-term abortions. And just 30% support tax-funded abortions. So again, only 30%. That means 70% don't want the government to pay for abortions. I'm definitely in that 70%, aren't you? Only 17% support late term. Frankly, I'm a, I'm a horde that 17% think it's okay to kill a baby when it's born. It used to be we were arguing over when it's actually a baby. When is it actually considered life? When is it more than tissue? As believers, we say at conception, there is spirit life and there is physical life being developed. Kara, you're about to have a baby. In just moments, we just declare life, health on your delivery in Jesus' name. We're going to have another baby in the house. Woohoo! And if you stand on one side and Olive on the other, the people will be looking this way the whole service. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to get both of you to be right here in the middle. Okay. 17%. And I want you to know, we have a lot to pray about because much of that percentage is on our coasts. I want a wave of glory to hit our coasts. Amen. I want the knowledge of the glory of the Lord to hit California and Oregon. Amen. Come on. Amen. And to hit New York and New Hampshire and Maine and some of these places. Aren't you all from Maine, Don? Come on, Lord. All right, more than 60% of voters favor Modest restrictions on abortions, such as a three-day waiting period, parental notification, and spousal notification. Again, the agenda that's out there right now is nobody can say anything. It's, it's a done deal. And uh, so currently, that's 60% that says, no, there needs to be some moderation here. There needs to be some thoughtfulness in prayer. That's where we step in again, to stand, to stand in. Um, Camilla was reminding me, how many of you have ever heard of James Robinson? Come on, a powerful man of God. Did you know that his mother almost aborted him? I think he was, she was raped. Now, in the norm, we think, well, she would have every right. She was raped. But something in her heart said, I'm going to use this life. And look what the Lord did. James Robinson. Wow. Currently, the U.S. has some of the most extreme abortion laws in the world, putting us more on par with countries like China and North Korea. In China, they've got a law that they can only have one child. 
So when moms and dads conceive after their first child, they're required to abort their children. It's murder. It's murder. Abortion's the same thing. It's just a prettier package. We're calling it freedom to choose. You can choose to murder your child. Somebody said recently that God is raising up a new black robe regiment, Don. Well, I don't know if I'm qualified, but I want to join that regiment. To be bold and outspoken for truth. To not be afraid and to not be intimidated. Amen? There are currently seven states, seven, that have zero limits on abortion. Meaning you can have an abortion up until the time of birth. Those states are Oregon, Alaska, Colorado, New Mexico, Vermont, New Hampshire, and New York. Now, I bet you thought California was going to be one of those. I'm sure they're close. But these are the seven. Oregon, Alaska, Colorado, New Mexico, Vermont, New Hampshire, and New York. When we pray in just a few moments, I want some of you to remember to pray for one of those states. Just remember. I'm going to pray for... I want you guys to pray for Oregon since you're Oregonians. You are too, Scott. Pray for Oregon. Anybody here from Alaska? Okay, somebody pray for Alaska, Colorado. When we pray in just a moment, ask God to touch these states, to touch their people, and to change their minds. The word repent really in its essence means to change your mind. Change your mind. If... And then Camilla added these two that, that we read that I want to say. Only 1% of elected abortions stem from rape. So once again, the talking points to try to convince us that this law should be upheld are, well, what about rape? Only 1%. I want to say, if there's rape, Let's consider that, but don't make a law for 1%. And 0.5%, even less, stem from incest. Again, a talking point, rape and incest. That talks to our heart. Of course, that person has suffered uh, injustice. They've been attacked. It's horrible what happened to that lady, raped or incest involved, causing an unwanted preg pregnancy. But we have an answer. We'll stand with you. We will love you. And we will believe that that child will be loved and can be useful and become a constructive part of society. Now, as kingdom people, we can even believe for the call of God on their life to raise up another Billy Graham, raise up another James Robinson, raise up another Catherine Kuhlman. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So I'm going to just ask for you guys to start that, that uh, song. And Camilla, I'm going to just ask you, you have the mic, just to lead out in prayer, just for the few moments we have left. We've gone a little longer, but it's been a great time. Just keep that music soft. I don't know if you'd like to come to the altar. We, many times we just ask you to come. I'm going to come. I want to kneel down. But in your heart, I just want you to humble yourself just for another few minutes just to stand in the gap and let's just pray together, especially about what's going to happen tomorrow when the Supreme Court comes and announces several decisions that they're making. I believe that Roe v. Wade will be overturned, that in the 50 years of this unlawful, unconstitutional law, that we're going to finally have jubilee and we're going to call on the Lord to hear us from heaven and to heal our land. Amen. Let's go to the Lord yeah. in prayer. Thank you, Lord. Mm. So, Lord, we know we're at a, a tipping point. We're at a breakthrough moment for our nation, Lord. So we just take some time now just to say we ask for your mercy. We are your people. We're coming to you, Lord. We're calling out to you. We're praying. We're humbling ourselves. We're turning from our wicked ways, our sin. We just thank you, Lord, for the healing of our land. We thank you, Lord, for the healing of our nation. We pray, Father, that you would heal this nation, Lord. 
So we lift up our Supreme Court to you. We lift up our justices to you, Lord. We ask for your protection over their lives and their families. We pray that you would release the spirit of wisdom and knowledge and understanding upon them now. So, Lord, we just lift up our nation. We just take a moment. We pause. We just say, Lord, would you intervene? We're asking for you to intervene in our nation right now in the name of Jesus. We are at a marker moment. A marker moment to release breakthrough and revival. Thank you, Lord, that you want to remove this stain against our nation. So we just lift up our nation to you now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We're your people. We're your people. Thank you, Lord, that we can come to you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, we thank you that you have helped Lindale to become a sanctuary city. And that as the law of the land is overturned, Roe v. Wade is declared unlawful, that when it comes back to the states, that many states will now have a path, that cities and elected officials in different cities of every state will be able to stand up and say, we stand for life. And we will be a sanctuary city for the unborn. We will not permit abortions in the city of Lindale. We declare and prophesy that the city of Athens will, will decree and write the ordinance that they will become a city that will not perform abortions. And the root of abortion in America that came through Athens, Texas, will be forgiven. That God, you will uproot it. And Athens will step into a new time of blessing and healing and prosperity and revival. We speak revival for Athens, revival for this city, revival for your people who have been so faithful to pray. God, we are your people and we are called by your name and we do humble ourselves and we are praying and we are seeking your face and we've turned away and we are turning from wickedness. And we ask you to overturn the wicked law of abortion, the wicked law of our land to be overturned. And God, that you would establish a new place of righteousness and cause the people of God and the church of God to rise up and fill the void that the government doesn't have to do it, but the people of God can step in to, to bring life and help and assistance and healing that we can preserve life and we can become a safe place for those that are in unwanted pregnancies. God, we love you and we thank you and we praise you. Thank you that you're using us, each one, as a voice, but that we join our voices together and we stand on the powerful promise that one can set a thousand to flight and two can set 10,000. So Father, as we kneel and pray, as we sit and pray, as we stand and pray, as we wait on you and trust in you, God, we know that you are going to send the answer and you're going to send the healing and you're going to send the angels from heaven to bring healing to our land. We're declaring that you are the one that we need and our eyes are upon you, that our hope and our trust is in you and that you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we could even ask or think, that your power is working in us and through us today. And we give you glory. And we give you praise. Just before we stop, is there anyone else that would like to pray out? I would. Dennis. Lord Jesus, we just thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for what we're seeing, God. That, um, Lord, we just thank you, Father. God, that in the natural, Lord, we haven't seen an opportunity like this, God. In, in 50 years, Lord, and God, it's not a coincidence, Lord, that it's the year of Jubilee, God, that it's been 50 years, Lord, and so, God, we just partner with you, Lord. God, we say, would your kingdom come, and would your will be done, Lord? God, would you move through these justices, God? Would you give us a favorable result, God, that would, uh, that would see Roe v. Wade uh, turned around, God? 
Lord, I thank you for the opportunity, Lord, for the, to come back to the states, God. And I just I see the word that Jesus said that in the last days, or that the kingdom of heaven is like the wheat and the tares, and that the enemy sowed tares, but that the wheat grew and the tares grew, and at the time of harvest, both were uprooted. And Lord, we pray that every state would see revival and that every state would pass laws that are in line with life, God. But where there are states and people that pass ungodly laws, Lord, I pray that there would be a stark difference, God, that conservative states wouldn't just pass pro-life laws, but that we would do that and also be resources, God, that we would love moms and love babies and we would take babies that can't be raised by moms and we give resources, God, and that that there, these sanctuary states, God, these states that are... Um, our sanctuary states for life, God, would be so prosperous, so peaceful, God, that people wouldn't want to choose abortion. They wouldn't want to choose death. They wouldn't want to go that way because there's a stark difference, God. Lord, I pray that states that choose life would be like Israel, blessed, and states that choose death, God, would be um, like the ungodly lands in the Old Testament, God, not for the sake of judging them, God, but would there be a difference, God? Lord, I pray that the body of Christ, God, would we rise up and not just call for a solution, God, but be the solution, God. Would you give us wisdom and revelation, God, on how to walk this out, Lord? Yes. And so, God, we're praying for our justices, God. We're praying for our governors, God. We're praying for our, our representatives and senators, God, in a federal level, but then also on a state level. God, would you move, God? God, would you raise up, God? God, we're not just seeking for a Moses or one person, God, but even Moses had elders that govern and help, God, would you raise up people, God, with a calling to be a state representative, God, with a calling to, edu to educate and to legislate for life, God. And so, God, we do, God, we ask for tomorrow, God. We ask for the answer, God, that we've been crying out for, God, for 50 years, God. We ask for the overturning of Roe v. Wade, God, and we believe it, God. But, God, like Pastor said, this isn't the end, but, God, it's the beginning, God. We're asking for revival. We're asking for reformation, God. God, that even as a church, God, that we wouldn't be a judgmental, God, of people that have put themselves in situations, God, but we would come in and love and help and seek and save, God, by your hand. We love you, Jesus. God, empower us to go with you, God. We say we're in this for the long haul, God. We're not going to see this overturned and then sit down and say we did it, God. We're not done. You're just getting started, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we thank you now for, for your move, for... for, for putting this law, this law before the Supreme Courts again to overturn it, Father God. But we know as the, as the Supreme Courts are ready to overturn this wicked law that, that the enemy is already plotting ways to circumvent that law, Father God. One has already been struck down, but there is another that is up for vote possibly this week, Father God. And we, I thank you that you will convict the ones who of are orchestrating this law that you will open their eyes father god that, that you will in a sense have mercy on them to show them that what they're doing is not of you father god and that ultimately you will let this law fail father god and, and the curses that have been put on this land because of this father god i ask that with the removal of this law that those curses would be removed father the toxicity and the toxic environment that, 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 that this, this unholy uh, um, murder industry has, has created over this nation, Father God. Please strip that down, Father God. Remove it. Restore health. Restore healing to this nation, Father God. Restore unity. Restore favor with you, Father God. Restore our relationship with Israel, for they are your chosen people, Father. In your holy and precious son's name. Lord, we just agree with that prayer that when you reverse Roe v. Wade, that you're going to reverse the curse that has come upon America. Amen. That you will heal our land. I just agree with that prayer. God, you'll reverse the curse, the open door that we gave to the enemy to steal, kill, and destroy. We close that door, and we'll see a new door of blessing and revival for our nation in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, thank you for the power of agreement as we come into agreement with your heart today. 
in perhaps one of the most important matters that matters to you, and we come into agreement with each other. And in the mighty name of Jesus, we argue the case for the unborn. We argue the case for the child trafficked. We argue the case for the ritualistic torture and murder of little ones. We argue the case right now before the highest court of all courts, your court, the highest court of all of creation. We stand before you as the judge of all judges, and we ask you to put a, a gavel of righteousness and justice, which are, are the foundation of your throne, put a gavel right into the middle of this matter that matters today. And we, as a base of our arguing this case in your presence, we remind you of what you said in Proverbs 21.1, the king's heart is in the hands of the Lord like channels of water. You turn it the way that you will. Our Supreme Court justices are less than kings. Therefore, they come under the sovereign sway of your power, of your spirit, and we pray that even tonight, some of those justices will have dreams and night visitations, that you would send your presence, that Jesus, you would appear to them in the room, that you would send angels as representatives of the highest court of all creation. And that those justices, beginning with John Roberts, the chief justice, and all the way down to each justice, we pray for divine visitation that will result in a divine interruption that would lead to a divine interception and reversal of Roe versus Wade. Lord, thank you that the gate of Project Stargate has been closed when our government, CIA, and Department of Defense jointly agreed to open our nation to the psychic and to the occultic in that official program that began the same year of Roe versus Wade. So in that open gate of darkness that was invited over our nation, that was the beginning of abortion legally supported in this nation. We forbid the continuation of it. We order the standing down of that power of darkness. We say that the men and women on the court, the Supreme Court, shall make the right decision this week as they begin to deliberate. Thank you for Justice Sam Alito who wrote his brief that was leaked publicly. And I pray for all of the justices that you would exercise sovereign sway, turn their hearts the way you will, and we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you all for the extra time to just pray and bring this before the Lord. Go ahead and turn that down for just a moment. I want to just say that we're standing with Don. He and Sherry would probably certainly be with us, but he has an open door of ministry on this Saturday to teach and preach about the kingdom of God and the royal dynasty. I've heard so much of that message, Don. I wish I could be in two places at one time, but we bless you. And I also want to tell you, remember I said something about Camilla and I having an anniversary? Uh, so on June the, what date did we say, Don? Uh, the 12th. Don is going to be here to preach and minister, and I'm going to be in Hawaii. No, I'm not. I'm going to probably be in Dallas. I won't be that far. But uh, Don will be back, and Don, we just always love it when you minister. Just, I just, and Chad, I was so blessed by your prayer, and all of you, Dennis, the prayers of the righteous are powerful and effective. Amen. So let's all stand up together. 
Lord, we thank you for an amazing time in your presence. All of us in the house and those of us that are online, we just declare we love you. Would you just say that with me? We love you and we know that the best is yet to come. And everybody said amen. amen. Have a blessed day and remember Wednesday night we'll be praying together in the chapel.